This lesson is on dividing multi-digit numbers. It comes from the standard 6.NS.2.2, fluently divide multi-digit numbers using the standard algorithm. You need to have your composition notebook out, and remember you also need a sharpened pencil, and you do need to take notes throughout the lesson. So we're going to begin with your next available set of pages. You're going to write what you see here on this screen on the left side of your composition notebook. So go ahead and pause your video at this time and copy what you see and then when you're ready to go push play and we'll work through the example. Okay, so what I would like for you to do is just to watch and listen for a moment before we start working through this example. On the left side of my paper you're going to notice here that I'm putting a box around I wrote DM. S C B R. That stands for divide, multiply, subtract, check, bring down, and then repeat if we um, need to continue. So this um, goes with the saying, does McDonald's serve cheeseburgers raw? And I know it was mentioned in a previous lesson, and a lot of times it helps if you write this down on the side of your paper, especially for those of you that um, are still working through the steps of long division. Now, when we're dividing uh, multi-digit numbers, the steps and the procedure is identical to, let's say, if we were dividing 100 divided by 5. Identical to that. The difference is here is just our numbers are bigger. So a lot of times when we are dealing with bigger numbers, it helps to use estimation. Estimating is sort of like, is basically rounding, but you want to round things so that they sort of work better for you in your head. So when you're looking at the example that I have written here, 879 divided by 31. In my head, I'm thinking, well, 31 is close to 30. And then I'm thinking 879 is kind of close to 900. So I kind of think, well, how many times does 3 go into 9? And that helps me get a starting point. 3 goes into 9 three times. Now I know I can't use 3 because of the fact that this is an 879 and it's not as high as 900. But it does give me a starting point to start with the number 2. Alright, so now it's going to be time to start writing. Now, if it helps, you may want to just watch and listen for a moment while I go through this process, and then you can pause your video and rewind it, and then write it out um, after you've at least heard it or listened to it going through once. Okay, so what I like to do here is I'm going to think and I had already mentioned about how 31 is close to 30, and so I'm really thinking of that 3 and this number right over here, the 87. So I know that if I choose the number 3, it's going to be too high, because 3 times 3 gives me 9, and I can't put a 9 here because I only have 8 to begin with. So I'm going to start with the number 2. Now the 2 has to go above the 7, because we're talking about 31, and 31 does not fit into 8 at all. So sometimes if you want to put a little x there to hold your place value, you can, and some of you will put a zero. Just be sure that when you transfer your final answer over, you do not have that zero in front of that two. So moving on, I'm going to go ahead and put that x there. Two times 31 is going to give me 62, and I'm going to subtract. 7 minus 2 gives me 5, 8 minus 6 gives me, gives me 2. So now I'm going to check, I'm at that C spot there. 31 does not fit into 25, so therefore I'm going to B for bring down the 9. So now I go all the way back up to the top, I repeat my steps, and I divide again. How many times does 31 fit into 259? So I'm going to think again, I have that 3, and then I'm going to think about the 25. Now I know that 8 times 3 gives me 24, so I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to see if that kind of fits there. So I'm going to put the 8 here. Now, you guys, a lot of times you might choose a number that's too low or too high, and it requires some erasing. And you know what? I do this all the time as well. So 8 times 31, so I know 8 times 1 gives me the 8. 8 times 3 gives me 24. I'm going to subtract. 9 minus 8 is 1. 5 minus 4 is 1, and then of course 2 minus 2 is nothing, is 0. And now I'm basically like kind of stuck. I'm done. I have no other numbers here. Now as we um, start working with decimals, I'm going to show you that you're going to end up adding a decimal and a couple of zeros. But for our purposes for right now, this 11 is our leftover bound. It is our remainder. So I'm just going to show you that what we can do is just leave it in, and write it as a fraction. The leftover amount is we have 11 leftover 
out of 31. I got the 31 from my divisor, the number that I divided by. Now, a lot of you might be used to um, just putting capital R11, and um, we're not going to be using remainders in sixth grade math anymore like this. We either are going to write them as um, fraction portions or as decimals. So you could just take your leftover amount, which is your 11, and put it over the number that you divided by. And this problem is done. So here's our next example, 5,796 divided by 25. Now dividing by 25 is kind of easy because if you think of it in terms of quarters, most of us can skip count by quarters, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, you kind of get the idea. So it's really not as bad as it seems for this example here. So I'm going to go ahead and begin. So I'm going to leave it as 25. I'm not going to round it in my head at all. But then I'm looking at the 57. How many times does 55 or 25, excuse me, fit into 57? Well, it's two times because I know that 2 times 25 gives me 50. So I'm going to write it down and subtract. I get a 7. I check it. 25 cannot fit into 7. So I'm going to bring down my 9. How many times does 25 fit into 79? three times because three times 25 gives me 75. I'm going to subtract. I'm going to um, get four. Check it. 25 does not fit into four, so therefore I'm good to go. And I'm going to bring down that six. Now I have a 46 down here. <clears throat> 25 only goes into 46 just one time. If I say two times, I need 50 and I don't have enough. So one, it has to be. One times 25 is 25. Subtract, 6 minus 5 gives you 1, 4 minus 2 gives you 2. Now I have no other numbers left over at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this the way I see it. So I'm going to um, bring my, my remainder up, which is my 21, and I'm going to put it over a denominator of 25. That is the number that I divided by, which was my divisor right there. So you can see it's really not too bad. So let's go ahead and th go through our last example. On this one here it reads, Callie has 1,850 books. She must pack them into boxes to ship to a bookstore. Each box holds 12 books. How many boxes will she need to pack all of the books? So I know a lot of times when you guys read word problems, you get all confused, like, I don't know what to do. Well, think about it like this. Imagine having a bunch of books and you want to put them into boxes. So you want to figure out how many boxes you're going to need. So you're wanting to divide them up. You're wanting to break up the books into smaller piles so you can ship them out to the bookstore in this case. So we're going to go ahead and set up our division problem here on this one. So underneath our box is going to be our dividend. That is going to be 1,850. That's the total number of books that we have and we're dividing it, dividing it up into 12 because each box will hold 12 books. So now we have our division problem set up and we're just going to go ahead and divide out. So 12 goes into 18 just one time. 1 times 12 gives me 12. When I subtract, I'm going to get a 6. I'm going to check it. 12 does not go into 6, so I'm going to bring down my 5. So now I have 65. 12 goes into 65 5 times. 5 times 12 gives me 60. I'm going to subtract, I get 5, and now I'm going to bring down my 0. 12 goes into 50 4 times. 4 times 12 gives me 48. I'm going to subtract, and I get 2. Now remember, the question is saying how many boxes will she need to pack all of the books. She's going to need 154 boxes, but keep in mind, she also has two left over and those won't fit in the 154 boxes so basically you need 154 boxes and you're going to have some leftover books and that's it for now so be sure to complete the self quiz the link to the self quiz is going to be directly beneath the um on on moodle not moodle i'm sorry on um canvas it's going to be directly beneath the link that you um checked off or clicked to get to this video and it'll say self-check multiplying or dividing multi-digit decimals. All right you guys that's it for now and we'll see you back.